In this episode, I'm going to bring you up to speed on what I've been up to in D-Crops, add some thoughts and opinions about my experience thus far and you know where I've gotten to, as well as shine the light and focus on the details about a staking mechanism within the game wherein you can hold assets and earn Hive. If this interests you, please stand by. Welcome back, Decrop Farmers. Bronze Dragon here, bringing you an update of my trials and travails within Decrops, where I've gotten to um, and just random thoughts on my experience thus far. So let's go ahead and jump in and take a look at what I've been doing. First of all, if you're unfamiliar with this game, it's a game on the high blockchain. And I got into it uh, a few months ago when Decrops did a crossover event with Splinterlands and sold the olive trees. Okay, At that point, I bought six olive trees. Um, and they had, well, let's take a step back. In most cases within uh, Decrops, uh, and just like real life, uh, plants will grow within one specific season. Now, just like real life, sometimes there's some crops um, that will grow within two different seasons. In Decrops, those uh, plants are far and few in between um, and are on the higher end of rarity, so they're more expensive. With that said, um, the olive trees uh, dropped, and uh, they are usually a spring crop. Um, but for that specific period, uh, he had allowed uh, a few different seasons uh, for the olive trees to be um, harvested. Now, we're out of that point, and anyone with olive trees will find that they can harvest those on a daily basis every 24 hours uh, within spring. Now, I say that um, to bring you up to speed because I did buy those trees, um, and I did harvest them. Um, let's go ahead and go into play uh, and you can see my inventory now what i've been doing is i've been gradually buying seeds uh, there's some been some a few packs here and there that i've opened up thanks to the people that uh, donated them to me um, and i've bought a few um, and between those packs and specific seeds i bought on the market generally rare and common seeds i've been trying to build up um, my rare and common uh, seed collection. Now, uh, one of the aspects of the game is the quest series. Now, one thing that I kind of didn't like about this is the fact that you have to complete every single quest to get your chest that season. Okay. Uh, when I went into it, I misunderstood it, but you have to complete every single quest. Now, when you step back and look at these quests, um, to be able to fulfill uh, all these quests on a season by season basis, you're going to need a good collection of seeds, um, at least like at least three or four, probably four of each common and rare seeds, and sometimes the higher uh, rarity. Um, you do have the ability to re-roll a quest. Say, for instance, if you have a, um, a a legendary seed that you don't particularly have, you can re-roll it and try to get one of the lower ones. But it is a little bit more difficult to try to get fulfill each item just to be able to get that one chest. Now. Um, from what I hear, I haven't fulfilled that uh, as of yet, but some of the people who play on uh, a, a daily basis have told me that being able to fulfill these quests and get that chest is one of the big ways to earn in the game. Okay, So with that out of the, the way, um, I'm, I'm working towards getting four each of the common and rare seeds for each season. That's my goal. Okay, so let's go back to my inventory. And you can check out my inventory. Uh, no, actually, let's go to cards. These are the actual food products that I've grown. And my approach, uh, I'm jumping around here, sorry, but my approach has been to sell off the one stars and keep the two and three stars for later. I haven't exactly decided what to do with them. Okay, so in this game, you can sell off your crops that you grow directly to the game and you get shares, okay? And the more shares that you earn on a season basis, the higher, uh, the larger amount of the pool of crop tokens at the end of the season you take away, okay? So you theoretically could sell everything you made and just get a larger share of crop, 
Okay. Now, the other way you can go in is you can actually go to the farmer's market and you can sell your items directly on the farmer's market and make crop totems that way, or uh, tokens, not totems. <laughs> um, and you may ask, well, why would I do that? Well, some people, uh, another factor within this game is you can buy items uh, if you don't, uh, if you raw materials like foods and seasonings and stuff like that, if you haven't grown them yourself and you can make other things with them. You can cook foods and things like that with them and then turn around and sell the foods for even more. Okay, so it behooves you because there's more steps within that, um, within the game, uh, to be able to create the foods. For instance, you also have to go in and uh, create, uh, you know, you have your different materials, but you also have to go in and build various things to create, uh, combine your food items to make different uh, recipes, really. So, uh, for instance, I have the olive trees, right? If I wanted to create olive oil, I would either have to buy an olive, uh, an oil press on the market, or I could go through and I could create it. And then I would be able to make olive oil. And then I could turn around and sell olive oil for an, uh, it's one of the, the higher uh, oil in and of itself is one of the higher rarity items, which is needed to cook other foods. Okay. So there's the example. But either way, um, what I've been doing is I've been selling off my one star items to get uh, shares and then take away some crop at the end of the season. You can see that I'm currently at 831 crop. I think there was one time where I bought a, a seed or something or other and I spent a little bit of crop, but this is basically the, the ballpark that I've earned thus far. You can take crop and you can buy things in game or you can buy uh, with with hive uh, or swap hive, okay? So let's go, get, go ahead and go over to my cards. You can see this is my full selection uh, of what I have now. So I have four rare lands. Now, <clears throat> each rare land you can plot, you can, uh, you can plant two different items on. Okay. So that's kind of how it works. Common lands, you can plant one item on rare two, uh, epic three and legendary four and so forth. So, um, let's go ahead and go over to play into my farm. You can see what I currently have. It's currently in the fall season. And you can see I have four garlic, a pumpkin, two carrots, and chili peppers uh, planted. Now, the goal of these is they all have varying times they take to ripen, right? And then you're gonna want to harvest them at the appropriate time when they become ripe. And then you can take and you can sell them on the market for shares, or you can put them on the farmer's market, or you can keep them, right? Um, and uh, work towards uh, completing the quest if you have enough seeds and you have enough lands to get all that done. I'm still working towards that though. Um, so takeaways I've had here, it helps to have a variety of seeds um, with different um, timing on them as far as how long they take to get ripe. Because one of the things you really have to keep your eye on is making sure that you don't have something that is taking up farmland and it's going to take too long to ripen past the end of the season because if so then you're going to lose that crop plus you've wasted a slot on your land which you could grow something that takes a lot less time to ripen so for instance i'm pointing out that this is fall ends in 12 days say for instance i planted something and it took 14 days to ripen there's no point in planting that because it would just go bad and you'd be wasting the plot, okay? So um, along with those olive trees, uh, we did get a bunch of the uh, mystery seeds, which is another item you can buy. Um, basically those are, whereas regular seeds you buy or get in a pack, you can reuse those. Once you use them once in a season, they have a 15 day cool down period. So um, you can basically just use them once in a season, then you can't use them until the next season uh, that, that rolls around, right? So that is why you need multiple copies of cards. Now, there are some cards, um, some plants that keep bearing fruit uh, once you, you know, uh, you might be able to, depending upon how, how long they take to ripen, you may be able to get, uh, pick those two or three times during a season, right? But uh, with the recent uh, olive tree event, I also got a bunch of mystery seeds. So I've been taking advantage of those and filling in the spots and using mystery seeds where um, I didn't have enough seeds. But I have been 
trying to buy one or two seeds per season to kind of beef up my um, beef up my collection as we go along. While we're on this uh, this page here, this is a selection of the boosters you can buy and what they can be used for. And as you can see, they can each be uh, they can each be uh, bought with crop. Um, so uh, the ferti uh, fertilizer, Ferti Plus, um, doubles the chance to get three and two star crops upon harvest for the land that it was applied to. Must be used before harvesting to take effect. So you can use that before you harvest to increase uh, your three and two star uh, crops. Kind of like using potions in Splinterlands, increasing your odds. Okay. We just discussed uh, mystery seeds. Um, it's basically a one-time random seed. Now it's kind of like a gamble, right? Especially when you're coming to the end, towards the end of the season. At the beginning of the season, it's not too much of a gamble, right? Um, you put them down, you get a long period, uh, 14 days, 13 days, you're fine. You've got plenty of time. But it becomes more of a gamble as you get down to, say, four days left in the season. You use a mystery seed and you come up with like a 10-day crop, bam, wasted. You have to clear the land that's a wasted seed and replant um, or buy another seed off the market, right? So um, that's what those are. They're pretty cheap, but one time only use. Um, now, the next item is speed grow. This reduces the time required for a seed to mature by 10 to 50% on a specific plot of land must be used before planting to take effect. Take that note. You have to go ahead and decide to use speed grow before you plant the seed. Otherwise, you can't use it, right? So, and obviously it's to speed things up. So you could use, you could buy speed grow. Um, you know, one strategy is you get down towards the uh, end of the season and uh, use a speed grow with the mystery seed, speed up that potential mystery seed in case you get like a, a 10 day uh, mystery seed or something like that. And then we have gas, which is used to uh, power your cooking uh, and crafting equipment. And then you have you can also just flat out buy a reward chest if you want to. 75 cents each contains five random reward items from the current season with a 30% chance to get NFTs and a 70% chance for boosters and or salt and pepper. Okay, so going back over here to my cards, you can see I have a pretty decent selection going here. Um, I have four uh, garlics. Uh, which is good. I have three broccolis still building on those. Uh, like I said, I want to get four each. Uh, you'll notice that these particular cards are alpha, these type uh, when you look at the background, and these over here with the tan or parchment looking background are the betas. Alphas are out of print. You can still buy them on Hive Engine. Um, I believe they're, uh, I forget how much they were. Um, so going over here to Hive Engine, let's check out. <clears throat> Just search for D. So we have D crops beta and D crops alpha here. And I just did the numbers on it. You're looking at about $6 for an alpha pack. You're looking about $3.30 for a beta pack, which is weird because you can still buy beta packs from the game for three bucks. So uh, at this point, it's kind of odd why the price would be higher on Hive Engine. I don't know. But let's go back and just to give you an example, let's go ahead um, and you can see uh, the beta cards I have, as well as some of the recipes, which I have not attempted yet. And you can see the other big item that I would have to announce is I just yesterday got an apple tree. Uh, if you checked out some of my previous vi videos, you saw that I pulled an apple seed in one of my packs and I took steps uh, yesterday and thanks uh, for some teamwork with CU and Lum. Uh, I have an apple tree to uh, be ready to harvest uh, when winter rolls around here in uh, what is a few days, uh, 12 days, 12 and a half days. Okay, so anyway, let's go back over to shop um, and let's buy a pack. At this point, it would be a beta pack. See what I get. Uh, in these packs, you get uh, three cards. Okay. Let's go ahead and go over to open. You can see I got a beta pack. And then let's go ahead and open it. And then on this one, when you click to open a pack, and uh, then you have to slide your slider over and then submit. That's how uh, I've seen a few people do videos and they're like, ah, oh, first off, you know, it took me a minute to figure out the slider thing because you can all 
open um, multiples at a time as well. Okay, let's see what I got. Two commons and a rare. Roasted turnip, basil, and French bean. I think I need French bean. Let's go check out uh, cards. Okay, so now I've got four my four copies of basil, and I've got one copy of French beans. So that was one of the ones I needed, plus I got a new recipe, roasted turnip. So, okay, good. Uh, nothing exciting, but uh, something else for me to use. Let's check that out. Uh, the basil is a summer crop, and the French bean is a spring crop. So that will help me out uh, when that comes around. So if you go into play, um, I had mentioned the trees um, that I was harvesting. Um, you can see that I have my six olive trees here and then my apple trees. Okay, so you can see that I'm counting down till spring to use my olive trees again, 27 and a half days. Um, and then my apple tree is just 12 and a half days. Um, the thing I like about trees, you'll find that the trees are a lot more expensive than what the regular crops are and regular land are. But once they're planted, they are harvestable once per day, once per 24 hours, every day of that season. Okay. And you don't have to worry. There's no timing on them. It's just once per day. Like when I get home after dinner, I can go on and harvest them um, and then go ahead and sell the fruit and do what what I you know uh, what I will with. So I think even though they're a little bit more on the expensive side, I might like to. Uh, one of my things is I'd like to um, enlarge in my uh, I guess orchard you would call it. So so I can get some more trees. But if you're wondering about uh, trees, uh, you can go to the market and there's there's a few different ways. There's two main ways that you can get these. Uh, you can buy them fully grown, go in, on the market. Um, you can buy an apple seed, which is a winter tree, a peach tree, which is a fall tree, um, a mango tree, which is a summer tree, and an orange tree, which is a spring tree. Of course, we talked about the olive tree, which is also a spring tree, and the Christmas tree, which is a winter tree, okay? You can buy them straight off by themselves. They're ready to go, they're mature, um, and all you have to do is just start collecting them, okay? As you can see, they're kind of pricey. 190 high, 199, 180, 165, 267. Um, olive tree, is, is it's been standing around 80. Um, you could go that route. Or you could buy a seed or get a seed in a pack because it's a, they're beta packs. They're still available, um, like I did on one of the packs I previously opened. I got an apple seed, um, and I could have turned around and sold this on the market for 70 but I was interested in having the apple tree, right? Um, so you can buy the seed, but you need a plot of land to grow that on. And what you need is a legendary plot. So you have the price of the seed, and then you have the price of the high-tech plot. There's another beta version of a legendary um, land plot as well when there's one up for sale. But the takeaway is, um, like this apple seed, 70 hive and then 85 hive, or you could just buy it already grown. Now, if you choose to get the apple seed and the plot and put it together and grow it, it takes 15 days uh, to mature, okay? So, uh, so there's that. Um, now, one other thing that was kind of um, uh, confusing to me at first was the differences between um, land plots and land, okay? So when you first pull up the market here, you can see that you have average farmland, fertile uh, land, awesome land, and high-tech land. Then you have plots, okay? So for a tree, you only need a plot. I mentioned earlier that the average farmland you can grow one thing on, fertile two, awesome three, and high tech four, okay? You can take these plots and you can break them up, or you can take these lands and break them up into plots. So you can take a fertile land and you can break that up into two plots if you wanted to, okay? It's an irreversible procedure, irreversible procedure. You're burning a fertile land uh, to make two fertile plots. Um, now, you may ask, well, what would that be good for? Obviously, uh, the high-tech plots are good for growing trees, right? These other plots, 
you do need plots, uh, and I'm not going to get into detail because I don't have a whole, I don't have a lot of firsthand knowledge about this part of the game so far. But as we mentioned, um, as I mentioned earlier, if you get into the process of making equipment and crafting, you need plots of land to put those items on, okay? And then what's that lead to? That leads to the building your, um, let's go back here, building your equipment, furnace, kiln, sawmill, windmill, beehive, preserve barrel, things that we would think of to actually produce the food items. You're gonna need those plots of land and various other resources that you can get in game or you can uh, buy, sell, trade, right? You can create those and then uh, once they're created, you can go ahead and craft, okay? So you have various recipes as you saw, uh, like this one, just a steamy palette, okay? For that, I would need three peas, a broccoli, two French beans, a cabbage, and one pepper equals a steamy plate, right? Um, and, you know, I think my main point here is that this is a game that seems um, very simple on the surface, but when you start digging in and looking at strategy, and I'm not talking about just um, pure profit potential, right? Um, at strategy for actually playing the game, it gets deeper and deeper and deeper uh, the more you get into it. So I'm just scratching the surface. Uh, one thing I did want to talk about was something that they uh, talk about on the, uh, the main website, okay? And that is harvest your crops and sell them for crop tokens or hold them for hive rewards. So I consulted their white paper. Um, or the wiki in this case, everybody calls it a little bit different. And basically these are holding, uh, hodling rewards, right? And um, they want you to hold your crop power and you get a various amounts of crop power from uh, various things you hold in the game, right? And you're gonna need at least 20,000 crop power to start getting holding rewards. But once you start getting those, you can start get, drawing in Hive on a usual basis. So let's just take a look at this. Um, I'll leave a link in the show notes, but you can also, um, they have a direct link on the Decrops uh, website to go right to the wiki. Um, also, if you're interested in this game, please go ahead and use my link uh, in the show notes uh, to start playing. Uh, you just log in with your, your Hive uh, browser add-on and uh, it's easy. Okay, so uh, let's just go through it. In the game of Decrops, the second reward system is via holding rewards, and they show you where to get, get to it up there. The system rewards players based on their crop power score with, the amount, with an amount of hive tokens. Okay, Crop power is a sum of the average values of your Decrop assets. Every day a snapshot of the player's account and all holding Decrops assets is taken. Okay, and then they go into directly uh, crop power is a 15 day average, okay, of your assets. And they tell you exactly how to increase that crop power, okay. Um, it's very much like, uh, you know, increasing your, your card power uh, when that used to count in Splinterlands, right? So you get a certain amount for the crop tokens you hold, for alpha packs that you hold, um, cards inactive and active cards that you hold, and uh, common, rare, epic, and legendary. Obviously, as you go up in rarity on the crop, the uh, you know, like holding legendary crops and doing nothing with them, just holding them, uh, earns you more points. And then that, where's that come from? From the reward pool. 30% of all sales in Hive go to the reward pool. Point, uh, 25% of that, point uh, two five. Uh, a quarter of a percent of that amount is distributed to all players who have at least 20,000 20, crop power. Okay. A sum of the player's crop token balance, unopened alpha and or beta pack balance, harvested three star quality crops, and the burn value of players' NFTs are all put into consideration. So I want to go ahead and mention that because right before I started this video, I had a... Um, I had seen in Discord, I'm gonna bring this over, um, whenever the Hive rewards go down, everybody can see what the rewards are, and I'm not trying to call anybody out, but a lot of the big names we know in Splinterlands are big holders in uh, Decrops, 
uh, whether they're really active or just holding things, I don't know. But you can see that um, depending upon your level, how, how much you hold, like this person, Apple eating Apple, uh, he has exactly 20,000 crop power and he's getting 0 0.031 hive. Is that much? No. Um, but it's something to think about if you're thinking about investing or starting to play this game. Once again, not investment advice. I just want to bring it up because you have players that are earning a lot more than that. I'm trying to scroll to the top here. Um, so I had to pause and scroll because it was a lot of scrolling. But as you can see, I got to the top here and, uh, you know, uh, one of the biggest, if not the biggest holders, see you in Lum, uh, shout out once again. Um, but he's pulling in, uh, last time the drop went about 18 hive. So I'm not saying, <laughs> I mean, from what I hear, he's got a huge amount of investment into the game and he's got a lot in the game, but I'm just saying that as this is just like a side effect. Once you start getting into the game and you build up to a certain level, you can actually start earning hive off what you hold in the game, right? We can go back and we can see uh, if you go here to holding rewards. Um, I, where did I find that? It took me a minute to find it. But if you're on the holding rewards uh, page here, you can see exactly what the current pool is, the reward pool right here. You can also see what uh, the average uh, APY is currently going at. Um, and you can see what the next drop is going to look like. And right here, you can see what your 15 day average is. So my 15 day average is like uh, 1,243 and a half. So I've got a long ways to go before I start getting holding rewards. With that said, I mean, it's something, I mean, uh, as my plans are to just continue and slowly build. Um, like I said, my immediate plans are to maybe pick up a few more rare lands um, as well as pick up, um, like I said, my rare and or commons and rare uh, seeds. I want to get to four for each seed um, per season, and then we'll go from there. But I think this is this is one of those things that, unless you're going to just jump in and throw a ton of money, it's one of those things that just builds over time, right? Um, I will say that the crop token was looking really nice over the last week. Of course, it took a hit along with SPS and everything else late, uh, last couple of days, um, but it was looking pretty nice. Um, and once again, it's a token on the Hive engine. So um, I did like for this pack I bought today, I shared, uh, I took a few other tokens I had, sold them off, traded them um, uh, for Swap Hive, and then was able to buy a pack over here. One of the big things I like about playing multiple Hive engine games is being able to go back and forth um, and enjoy the different games so okay well this has been bronze dragon let me know in the comments what you're doing in d crops if you're doing it um if you have any questions let me know i'll try to uh, try to hook you up with some this has been bronze dragon bringing you a d crops update i hope everyone on your side is happy and healthy and i will see you on the flip side